What's going on everybody? Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish and today I'm going to share with you the first fly that I learned to tie many years ago and we're going to tie the clod hopper. Now the clod hopper was originated by a gentleman named Paul Stimson but it gained a lot of familiarity when Alan Gretchen Beatty, Beatty put it in their book. Um, so let's just get into it. This is a core 1760 size 10 hook which is a terrestrial hopper hook uh, for a thread here. And just got some uni 6 aught and the color is camel. So we're just going to lay down a thread base all the way to the back of this thing. And once I get above that barb right there, I'm going to call that good. I'm going to come up one or two wraps. So for the next step here, we're, we're tying a foam fly and I think if you're struggling with your foam flies and they, they want to spin and twist on you a little bit, this is the key to solving that problem. I've got a tiny strip of throwaway foam. This is tan two millimeter, but this is just off of the edge. So now you see on that thread base, I've put some super glue gel and all I'm going to do now is Imagine where that thorax is going to sit in front of the abdomen and that's where I want that foam to sit right there behind the head. And once I've got that on like so, I'm just going to crank this down a little bit and tie it all the way back to those last thread wraps and then I'll trim that foam off with a simple uplift like so and get that little nub out of there and continue wrapping down this foam. And now what this little layer is going to do is when we add our body foam, it's going to help grab all the thread wraps that we use and sink in. And this will act as a little cushion and it will really solidify our foam placement. All right, so now this is our working foam piece, two millimeter foam. Uh, this is tan. And as you can see, I've cut a tip into the end there. And the reason being when I place this over the hook like so to tie down. I want that pointy end sticking out as a little grasshopper butt, if you will. Once it's here, I'm gonna to switch to my offhand and then it's one wrap over, we'll make sure it's lined up and then gently pull as you come under the hook and then check your placement. What we're looking for is even spacing around that hook and you can see it's not quite even. So we'll just take it off just and tie it back down. See how we did. And don't go real aggressive on these thread wraps to start. That's better. Now we've got a middle placement for our foam. If you go real crazy on this to start, you're, you're gonna lose some of this. So now, all I'm gonna do is make some diagonal wraps here and, and start getting this foam condensed onto the hook shank. And again, keep in mind, you want that riding down the middle. We're going to tie this all the way to behind the hook eye. And one more wrap here and we'll be right up to it. And you don't want to crowd that hook eye too much because we will come back and, and add some more elements into this. And if, if you like fishing grasshopper flies, but you're not quite sure you, you want to dive into the Amy's ant, which can be a little bit of a, a tricky fly. Well, this is the fly for you. I mean, great profile, of course floats really well, and many, many less steps than an Amy's ant or some of the more complicated terrestrials out there. So you can see on the top, got that foam kind of solidified down. So now what I'm going to add I've got a dry fly hackle brown and I'm just going to tie this in by the tip and I've prepped it a little bit, nothing too crazy, just enough that it's not going to slip out when we start wrapping it. I'm going to get that tied in. And now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make a few thread wraps where I think the abdomen should end and the thorax should start. And right in there, we're going to start our body. So. 
for the body. I'm going to dub this one. And you could use chenille. But for this, I like a red body the same as I do in, in a lot of my terrestrials. It, it just seems to grab their attention. They don't hesitate. They smack it. So let's just get some of this spawn semi seal in uh, uh, this is the slow burn flame and like so and we're going to be dubbing all the way back and then dubbing over that back to the front once again so you don't need a ton of dubbing here at least on this first pass back but what is key is before you make that last wrap here where that feather is, get one wrap behind that feather. And then when you start wrapping, there's no slippage and that feather will behave exactly as you want it to as a rib and then also providing some flotation. Just add a little bit more dubbing, make sure we can get all the way back to our starting point there. And on this pass, any of those little spots that we missed should get covered up just nicely and there we are right back to our starting spot I'm gonna get rid of some of the really excess long fibers there don't need those sticking out all right now let's wrap this feather and as far as spacing here we're just kind of palmering this through but if you need extra flotation by all means palmer it a little closer to itself if you want wide spacing that's your choice too and as far as the size of this hackle, I try to find a feather that's just a little bit undersized so you can see that those legs are just hitting the bottom of that hook gap. And that's perfect for what I'm, I'm trying to achieve here. Because we do kind of want the body to make an imprint on the top of the, the water surface. So I'm in front of my abdomen. This is where we'll tie off that hackle. few good wraps and then get a couple wraps in front and we can safely remove the tag end of our quill. Any of these fibers you have sticking out in front there, just go ahead and trim them right out. We don't need them. There we go. Pretty good looking buggy body so far. So now we need a little bit of flash in there and for the flash I'm just using some rainbow crystal flash and of course use you know whatever floats your boat so to speak but for whatever reason this rainbow is a pretty good do it all kind of color so we're gonna we're gonna really go at it and I'm gonna use let's say 10 strands here which is a lot but I want it flashy alright so I'm just gonna double that flash over the thread bring it up on top and finish my thread wrap or yeah thread wrap and you can see it traps that on top and then just a couple wraps over the top and we'll have it sticking out the back over the body like so as far as a trim you can trim it right now we just want it sticking out past the butt a little bit I like to cut at a slight angle so we don't have all even fibers there and that's about it for our flash nothing crazy and now I've got some elk hair in a stacker already and as far as the quantity start with a, a pencil thickness and then once you've gotten all the fluff removed from the, the butt ends this is what you're working with it's a healthy stack and we're gonna go right on top so that those hairs kind of line up at the end of that flash once I've got that positioned couple loose wraps and then I'm going to add tension as I go and I'm going to just simply continue wrapping back on that until I've got about nine or ten wraps and really solidify that elk hair down all the way against your abdomen right on top of that flash looks pretty good so we're going to go ahead and trim out now the butt ends we don't, don't really need them. I'm not going to worry too much about how crazy clean I get these because we're just going to wrap the rest of this down anyhow. So now pull out the hairs we want to keep and finish tying down our thorax slash head section. Like so. 
Hope you guys are with me so far. Nothing crazy. It's a pretty simple fly. All right, so now we need to put in some head and thorax material. Got a couple of these that don't need to be in there. And that's as difficult as that was. So for the thorax, you could definitely dub a thorax. They use a little darker color, but since peacock is such a fish magnet, I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to trim off three or four hurls here from the eyed stick. And I'm going to tie all three of them in together right back here in front of that wing. I'm going to come off about an inch and a half back though on those hurls before I wrap them in. And so you can see here roughly inch and a half of these tips that are not going to be utilized and we can just remove them there. And once you get that all the way in like so, now you notice I've, I'm bringing my thread back to here, but what we're going to do is take all three hurls, gently twist them together, twist, 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 and now we'll start wrapping. And just wrap all the way forward to right behind that foam, and then come back to where we started. So we've got a really nice coverage there, some dense packing of that, that peacock. A few good thread wraps and trim out that butt section. So we are almost done with this little clod hopper. So now that piece of foam sticking out over the front, we're just gonna bring that guy back and much like we did to start, check your lining and if it's aligned properly, continue to wrap that head down. It just takes a few secure wraps like so. And now you can see you've, you've got some extra coverage to trap that wing. And we are ready for our final element. And Mr. Stimson was very particular about the color of his legs. He tied this fly in a bunch of different colors. And what he realized were the hoppers that he was trying to emulate all had these red and black legs they were very prominent and once he switched to a red and black leg this fly really took off for him so on my side I'm gonna tie one in where the foam meets the body so right underneath that that edge that line and now I'll do the same on your side so I'm tucking it up against that foam letting my thread grab it and bring it right into its little spot there where it's pretty happy and as far as measurement on these legs, the biggest factor is that the rear portion extends to the end of the body or just beyond. The front, they don't have to be nearly as long, but once you're positioned and you're happy, go ahead and give some securing thread wraps there, and we are ready to whip finish this guy. And just be mindful of those legs. You could trim them a little bit, uh, before you do the whip finish if you really wanted to. And we've got one fit whip finish, tightened it down, and one more whip finish to make sure this thing is not gonna fall apart on us, like so. All right, so now let me trim this thread out. And all we need to do at this point is trim the rest of that foam topper on top of the wing, but I found after tying a couple thousand of these, that if you go ahead and cement all your thread wraps now, it's easier to use this as a little tag and pull back, and then you can get a nice bead of cement right on top of those thread wraps. You don't want to miss it, because this fly gets chewed up a bunch. And then of course, right where those legs are tied in, you know, we're under the bottom where that knot is sitting from our whip finish, and you can see the importance of really getting a nice coat of cement on your flies. As far as not coming apart, this is key. All right, and that's about it for the cement. And as far as trimming this um, wing pad or what, what have you, you can go just straight across and call it good. Um, just for a little bit of a, an aesthetic that's more pleasing, I like to go at an angle from my side and then match it up on your side and make a little point.
It makes me happy. I don't know that it makes the fish happy, but that's okay. And now for these front legs, I'm just going to trim off some so that they don't look too outrageous. I'm wanting to give one uplift on that wing, and there you have it. A clawed hopper, red and black legs, just as another trigger, peacock head, another trigger. You got slow burn, um, UV flame semi seal, once again, trigger. I mean, this thing, it wiggles, it jiggles, and it makes the fish happy. Thanks guys for watching. Um, if you have any comments, leave them below, we'll address them. And as always, please hit like and subscribe, and we will see you guys on the water.